Okay, this is the line once it's been screened through a roughly a six mil screen. Okay, oh there's Clyde. And that's the powder inside the kiln. And as you can see there's some burnt, unburnt stone around the edges. But you know, you're never gonna get it perfect, but get what you can I say. There's another one which is chock a block full. And if you notice right here in the guts, she's all powdery. Which is uh, a good sign that I've got a good burn underneath that excess stone on the top. This is a uh, powder that was from the burnt, the last burn. So any stone that I do now from these kilns, I put on this side, and uh, hopefully it'll end up looking more like this. Okay, so you can see the powder through that. And once I've tubbed it off, it's fairly, it's like a liquidy sort of state. It's very, um, very light and fluffy, but, uh, you know, I'll jiggle it down for a few minutes. That'll settle down and I'll get another shovel in there easy as. All right, so it's a very simple process. It's a very old art form, which any of your castles around the world and your old buildings prior to 1940 was built with this stuff. Okay, it's a lost art because people are generally too lazy these days to want to try and make it or even understand it. This is just excess stone that's come out which hasn't burnt from two, two lots. And if you've got a machine, ah oh, hell it makes it a lot easier. Okay, that's my little setup. I have the kilns with uh, clear some of the dirt out the funnel there so you can actually see. Oh, well, that's all it is. 44 gallon drums with a vent pipe at the bottom. It's called layer upon layer upon layer, like a Sara Lee cake. Timber, stone, timber, stone, timber, stone. Remember this though, if you are going to attempt this, think of, in this case, in a 44, I use a 20 mil and a 40 mil size limestone. I keep my stone covered over here. Keep it nice and dry, because the drier the better. Same as, same goes with your timber. Okay. So that's roughly 40, 50 mil and 20 mil stone through it. So it allows the fire to breathe and not suffocate. I use what they call here in Australia, uh, sandalwood, fake sandalwood. I bench it down to the sizes that I require. Okay. And then I simply do this. I burn these kilns. You've seen it in the other videos. Nothing new, nothing less. And it's certainly not an old thing that I'm doing in today's standards. It's a new thing in today's standards. In days gone by, it's way, way old. It's been around since the Egyptians and the Romans. So just that uh, cement companies don't want us to know about how to burn our own lime. If you're willing to have a go, it's a cheap way of building a house. Okay. Nothing's unachievable if you're willing to have a crack. All right, thank you, YouTube people. Thank you for liking my pay my my uh, videos and my pages and stuff i'm hoping it's showing you as a a way of that you can do this sort of stuff yourself the only thing you need to know is work out your ratios your wood that you're burning the temperature and consistency of temperature because remember you are driving off the oxygen and the moisture out of the stone and that's what creates that chemical reaction all right Say goodbye, Clyde. Good boy. Alright. Ta-ta, people. Enjoy the rest of your day.